morning. Welcome. We're glad that you were with us. We trust that the next few minutes that we spend looking at God's Word would be inspiring to you, challenge you, and position you for next year. So we are in starting off a short series, five parts. We did the first part on Christmas, uh, 25th of December. So if you missed that, I want to encourage you to go listen to that. And we are calling it Exit and Entry. You see, we are at the end of a year, and we are entering a new year. So we are exiting, but we are also entering. But one of the key thoughts that we want to look at uh, during this time is that the way that we exit is the way that we enter. And some of the examples are that if I am in a relationship, maybe as a young adult, and the relationship ends with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, uh, the way that I exit or leave that relationship is the way that I will enter the next one. If I leave a, a job or a town, the way that I exit is the way that I will enter. Why? Because I am the person who is exiting, but I am also the person who is entering. So I am taking myself with to the next relationship, to the next job, to the next town. And we want to, in this time, look at the fact that we are exiting a year, but we are also entering a year, and I am taking myself out of this year, and I'm taking myself into the next year. So it's very possible that nothing will change next year unless I am willing to change. And on 25th of December, the first part, we looked at the topic of unity. And I encourage you to go listen to that if you missed that. So in, in this, this one, we want to look at, uh, maybe in a practical term, the term would be budgeting. How do I appropriate my resources? How do I plan my resources? And just a very practical tip before we get to some of the more spiritual things. Uh, financially, you need to be budgeting. You need to look at your finances and you need to plan your finances. And maybe if this was a difficult year financially, maybe one of the reasons might be that you did not appropriately plan and budget. And why don't you use this time over the next few days or week when there's a bit of a rest season to think about these things and to make sure that your plan financially, your budget for next year is in place. But in line of that, I want to look at it slightly more spiritually. And I want to ask you the question, how are you planning your time? How are you budgeting your time? How are you appropriating and setting out your time. And as we are exiting this one year and entering into a next year, unless we purposefully do something to change the way that we look at our time and manage our time, it will just be the same next year as it was this year. Why? Because I'm taking myself into next year and I'm taking my habits into next year. And the way that I manage time during 2020 will be the way that I manage time in 2021. Unless I use this time and with God's grace, there are some changes that are applied. You see, how we spend our time is more important than how we spend our money. Many of us would have budgets and plans for our finances but we don't have budgets or plans for our time. And I want to encourage you at this time to seriously consider time and the time that God has given you and how you are using that time. Let's start by reading a scripture in Romans 13, verse 11. From the New Living Translation, it says, This is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. And the writer here is talking about the fact that uh, we need to love and we need to grow in our love and be more loving to all the people around us because of the seriousness of the time. Listen to what he says. He says, time is running out. Is it urgent? Don't you realize how late it is? And the writer here is saying that it is possible to misinterpret, not see what is right in front of of you. In the Old Testament, we read of a, a group of people who were able to understand the times. And if we, we read the full passage, it's uh, actually they are preparing for war and they are listing all the, the families and all the groups 
that are preparing for war. And in the midst of this normal count of the, the army, we read the following in Second Chronicles 12, verse 32. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. And if we look at time, we need to begin by looking at the season that we find ourselves in. Are we able to discern the times in which we are living? Are we realizing that we are living in critical times and time is running out? Are we able to discern, like the sons of Issachar, what is happening, and what the seasons are, and what the appropriate response in this particular season might be? So, first application for today. is I want to encourage you to ask God to show you your season the season that you find yourself in, but also the season for your family. Can we at this time make the time, set some time apart, and spend time with God and say, God, what are you leading me into? What is the next season that I'm about to go into? See, remember we're talking about exiting and entering. We are exiting a season and we are entering a new season. But in that middle space, we have the ability to connect with God and to ask God for His guidance and for His leading so that as we exit one season, we are prepared to enter the next season. What is the season that you find yourself in? What is the season that God has installed for you next? Take the time. Wait on Him. Hear from Him. And then, like the sons of Issachar, you will be positioned to know what to do. If we jump back to, to finances, because it's maybe just an easier way to, to understand and to illustrate that. If I know what is going to happen in three months' time, I would be able to plan my finances accordingly. And I'd be able to be better positioned for that season. And in the same way, I want to encourage you to ask God what the next season is He's leading you into so that you can appropriate your time and allocate your time correctly. But also, mums and dads, what is happening in the lives of your children? What is the season that your child is entering into? They are exiting one grade at school and they are entering a new grade at school. They are exiting and they are entering. And in this middle space, you can sit with them. And together you can say, God, would you lead us? Would you show us what is going to happen in the next season? What should we spend our time in? Practically, kids have so many activities. Now is the perfect time to sit with your kids and together to hear from God. What are the activities we should pursue in this next season? Again, because God knows what lies ahead. And He has the ability to position us beforehand if we seek Him when it comes to the seasons of our lives. In James 4, there's a bit of a rebuke coming from the writer. He says in verse 13, Now listen. You say, today or tomorrow we will go uh, do this or to this city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, then we will live and we will do that. How often do we assume that there will be a tomorrow? How often we assume that there will be a next year? Without acknowledging that time is not actually ours, but time is in the hand of God. In the book of Ephesians, we read, Look carefully at how you walk. Live purposefully, worthily, and accurately. Not as the unwise and the witless, but as the wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. 
what is so beautiful about God's word is it, it almost it's almost a, as if this might have just been written just for us. Even though it was written 2,000 years ago, it is so applicable to our time. And I want to encourage you not to be unwise, not to be foolish, but to recognize the season of your life, to recognize the season that we are in as a, as a humanity, as the world, but also to be wise, to make every opportunity count. To be wise, to use your time wisely. Colossians 4 verse 5, we hear a similar thing. Behave yourselves wisely. Live prudently and with discretion. In your relationships with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, make the very most of the time and cease, buy up the opportunity. So what is the second application? See time as a valuable resource and spend it wisely. Today, tomorrow, the next days that, grant, that God grants you, see that as a valuable resource. Don't just assume that because there is a tomorrow, they will, tomorrow will have another tomorrow. Firstly, understand that time is in God's hand, and He has given us a certain amount of time. Now can I encourage you to see that as a valuable resource and to use it as God would lead you. In Psalm 127 verse 2, it says, In vain you rise early and stay up late. You toil for food to eat, for He grants sleep to those He loves. This is a bit of the other side. Sometimes we spend so much of our time and energy into a certain area that it almost becomes a burden. There's a balance that we should not be lazy, but it can also be that we become, to the other extreme, workaholics and spend too much time focusing on something. And then it becomes counterproductive. Then it becomes a, a rising in vain and a staying up in, too late and toiling and hard work and not achieving anything. And then we find this beautiful promise. It says, for God grants sleep to those that he loves. See, there is a place for resting. There is a place for sleep. And part of that resting and that sleep is actually a, a surrendering to God. Saying, God, I'm going to give you these eight hours and I'm not going to try and produce something in my own strength, but rather I want to surrender to you. I want to rest. I want to acknowledge that I am frail and I don't have all the strength and I cannot do this on my own. So would you refresh me during this night's rest and give me fresh insight so that tomorrow I have new energy to achieve what you have called me to do. Another way of talking about this is to build in a rest day, a Sabbath day. We all know the story of how God created the heaven and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day, He rested. And He declared that today to be holy, a day of rest. Can I encourage you to build in a day of rest? Somewhere in your week, a day when you switch off, a day when you say that I'm not going to keep on doing this in my own strength and putting more effort into it might not achieve it, but rather resting, and here's the key, not just resting meaning watching a movie or lying on the couch, but resting in God, turning your attention and your focus during that day to God so that God can refresh you. See, God is a creator, and if you require creativity, that comes from God. God is the God of strength. And if you need strength, that comes from God. God is the God of wisdom. And if you need wisdom, that comes from God. During this rest day, what we are supposed to do is not lie on the couch. We are supposed to turn to the source of life, God Himself. To allow His creativity to flow for us. His strength, His wisdom, His insight. 
if we exit a week in this way, resting with God, we are entering the next week with everything that God has deposited within us during that time that we rested. And the next week will be a wonderful, creative week because God had filled us with His energy. So let's recap. Number one, ask God to show you the season that you find yourself in. Number two, commit your time to God. Number three, please spend your time wisely. It is a valuable resource. Number four, all in a rest day, a day where you seek God's face, where you allow Him to fill you with fresh energy and fresh vision for the next week, for the next season. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for this wonderful gift of time that You have given us. Lord, in Your Word, it declares that all the days of our lives are written up in Your book. Father, we want to surrender our days to You. We don't know how many days we have. You know that. But Father, would you, you help us to use each and every one of these days that you gift us with. Something that is valuable. Something that is precious. Father, would you help us and lead us to discern the times that we are living in. Globally, as a nation, but more specifically, us as a family. Where do we find ourselves? What is the next season that we are entering into? Father, would you make us wise like the sons of Issachar, who was able to discern the times and who knew what had to be done next. Father, would you help us to build in a day of rest, a space where we connect with you and are filled with fresh energy so that you can exit one week and enter the next week with your power and with your strength. I pray, Father, that you would bless the time of each one listening, that you would guide them, that you would lead them, and how to spend their time wisely. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray and I trust that you would have a wonderful time with your family. As you rest over this festive season, may you be refreshed, may you be invigorated, most importantly, would you use the time to exit one year. Use the time to hear from God so that you can enter the next year knowing where He's leading you and where He's guiding you to.